What's going on, people? I'm back again. I got a little more time. Got to do a little survey. Got a chance to get out the office, and I don't feel, feel like I was through talking this morning anyway. Mm -hmm. And as always, place your cross on when? First. That means first before you do anything. Put him in the forefront of your life, in your decision-making, everything. It don't matter what it is. Whatever you do, put the Lord first. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth <coughs> as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I was talking about cleaning house and when God cleans the house, it's not really, it's nothing nobody can do about it. And one thing, a lot of things, times you're going to see, especially in the Old Testament, when God cleaned house more so in the Old Testament, let's put it this way, he always do it, right? But a lot of times in the Old Testament, it was him. I'm talking about, it was like, you know it was him. But if you see, if you watch from the Old to the, all the way up, you'll start seeing he started using, utilizing people to execute his judgment. Gideon, Joshua, Moses, holding up the staff so they can win the battle. He'll use us. And the thing is, people, if the Holy Spirit dwells inside us, there's going to come a time in your life when he's going to use you as judgment on another person. It is what it is. Mm. You know, a lot of times we don't want it. You got to think about it. The prophets, they had to pronounce judgment. God said it, they got to say it. And sometimes you're going to have to say what God said to you. Hey, you've missed it. Like one of my... Uh, the quarter mile, use any lane to turn left. One of my favorite sayings right. is, you don't know who you're dealing with. I like, oh, I say, you'll see. And when, when I say that to people, people be like, what you going to do about it? Like, you don't know who you're messing with. You'll see. The, the the carnal mind gonna automatically assume that what are you left, gonna do about it? To I'm not gonna do a thing. But the thing is, I lean on what the Bible says. If he say you can't touch me, I'm gonna use that. <laughs> I'm gonna use that to my benefit. Continue on Cottage Hill Road, which is actually mile. God's benefit. You know, and people swear, oh, what you gotta do? Nah, I ain't gonna do nothing, man. I'm not going to do nothing. I just know I'm a child of the Most High God, and you can't touch me, mm. especially if I'm doing what's right in the eyes of the Lord. And if you do touch me and you do kill me, I guess it was just my time. That's why he said, don't destroy, don't fear them that can destroy the body, but fear him that can destroy both soul and body in hell. So that's who I fear. And my fear with him gives me a boldness. That I know if I'm doing the right thing. And if you know if you're doing the right thing by God. Then nobody can't touch you. I was reading a story today. From David. It's like they. Most people know they're doing wicked. They do. They just think. People think they get away with things. And that's what I'm getting at today. People often think. Well. God is a forgiving God. And. They keep doing the same mistakes. And they're like. Well God must have forgot. What I did. So. He forgave me. And I'm going to keep doing the same thing because he's a forgiving God. And then eventually, all them, them hot coals start falling on your head. And you wonder, what did I do to deserve this? Well, yes, Christ died for our sins, for us to have forgiveness, for repentance. But repentance without change, you're still going to face the consequences. And as we know with David, you still face consequences of wrongdoing. As you know with Moses, you still face consequences. Smite the rock once. Oh, do this. And then Moses did different. I can't remember. Did he say speak to the rock or something? And Moses spoke the rock. Even when David numbered the children of Israel, there are consequences to disobedience. I don't care if you're a Christian. I don't care if you're a non-believer. The same judge is over all the earth, whether people want to believe it or not. And he used many type, many people to execute his judgment. I brought up Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar came to power and took over Israel because God has pronounced judgment against Israel. 
And guess who had to execute it? Nebuchadnezzar. Same if we get a ruler in power and and we start going downhill or somebody sack us, hey, consider that judgment against the Lord. All you can do is pray about it and hope he leads you the way. He told some of the captains, he was like, y'all going to be delivered over to the hands of Babylon. But no, some of them like, I'm going to Egypt. It's safe there. It's good over there. Went to Egypt and it didn't work out too good plan. But the ones that was taken by the Babylonians, they were protected. So they think about it, even if God delivered you into the hand of your enemies, if you have righteousness, if you have God on your side, it doesn't matter. Ask Daniel, Nashak, Meshach, and Abednego. Ask them how you are still protected in a foreign land. It doesn't matter. If God is for you, who can be against you? So if you got that in your mindset and you believe it, it's going to give you a boldness that people don't even understand. And it's like, I know I can't do nothing about it. So I was like, my family, like I said, one of my favorite things, you'll see. If I'm telling you and you don't see it, you will see it. And that's how people who operate in the will of God operate. You'll see. Whatever. You ain't God. I ain't. But I work for him. And you work for him too. And you got the right, the God-given right when God utilizes you to pronounce judgment, to speak what he says, if they don't listen, you'll see. It's very simple. And you messing with the wrong one today. You know, that in the world, the world say that too. You messing with the wrong one, you don't know me. No, how about this? You messing with the wrong one, you don't know my God. You don't know my God. He's for me. And if you are against me, he's against you too. And that goes for anybody. And if I'm, think about David was so scared of the Lord, he wouldn't even smite Saul, even though the Lord had rendered the kingdom into Saul, into David's hand from Solomon's hand. I mean, from Saul's hand. David was like, David had two chances to smite Saul. He was like, I'm not finna touch God's anointed. He was anointed to be king. I'm not gonna mess with him. You understand? That's why when the cupbearer came back and was like, hey, y'all, uh, the king, told me to slay him and I slew him. And he was like, oh, you thought you was bringing me good news. You thought you smiting my enemy, who is anointed, God's anointed, was gonna bring me happiness and joy. No, you touched somebody you ain't supposed to touch. And the thing is, he lied about it. He lied and said he, Saul fell on his own sword, but in order to gain honor and favor from David, he was like, yeah, I killed him. Oh, you did? You finna die too. What, what what makes you think you can touch God's anointed, said David. And he pronounced judgment on him that fast. You see, you got to be careful when you're trying to take matters in your own hands and do things that's against God's will and God's plan for your life and other people's life. That's why he said, it's in your power to do the right thing. Do it then. You know, treat people with respect. Treat people with love and joy. Vengeance belong to who? The Lord. We live in a, every action movie got the same thing, same concept. You kill my family, I'm going to kill you. And normally that bloodshed uh, spread through the whole movie. And sometimes even the person who after vengeance dies too. Think about John Wick. The whole movie about John Wick was a dog was killed. This dude then slaughtered thousands of people because of a dog. <laughs> his judgment he could have just took wrong doing it just a dog or just waiting for the Lord to do it but what if that dog now think about this what if John Wick was operating in the Lord and it took a dog a simple act as a dog to bring down a whole organization to make them crumble God, God didn't use single men all the time. He used Samson and his weaknesses to bring down the Philistines. Did he? Yes. You messed my, you killed my wife. Oh, oh, you, you took my wife and gave it to somebody else? Oh, oh. Samson was endowed with strength for a reason. This man gotta be out of his mind. Or he, Think about it. 
what made you tie fox foxes tail to tail and light them up? I mean, tie. I mean, put flames on the tails of foxes and have them run through the woods. Good God, have mercy! How they even think of that? You know what I'm saying? Wow! I'm like, what about the, all those poor foxes? I know y'all dogs and animal lovers like, oh, <laughs> look at my get on somewhere. God used a bear to rip a bunch of kids to pieces for messing with Elijah. Bald head, may the Lord curse thee. I curse thee in the name of the Lord. It wasn't Elijah that cursed them. Elijah just pronounced judgment from God. Curse thee. They don't go line up with Christ. The Bible said, bless and not curse. But this is the thing. If God curse you, Ain't nothing that can be done. What he said. It's a terrible thing to fall into the hands of the Lord. What uh what the prophet told Eli? If a man a man offend against a man, I mean a fan of man offends against God, who can intervene for him? Nobody. Nobody. Then he told Samuel, hey, tell me what the dream. Tell me the dream. Or what the dream. If you don't tell me, it's gonna be upon you. Okay, well, the Lord said. That you and your sons are going to die. And there will be no man sitting. You already know this because another prophet already told you. But I'm going to tell you again. As a young boy. Sammy was young when he told Eli. Hey, you finna die. You know how hard that is to tell somebody you finna die? Think about Herod. Or whoever that was. I think that was Herod. Thought he got away with murder. Thought he got away with crucifying Jesus. Thought he got away with beheading John the Baptist. The Lord used Easter. <laughs> and when he got up there and uh, people was worshiping him, he let them worship him. And what happened? God smote him because he didn't give reverence to him. He died right there in that, in that, uh, that throne. Dead. What about the, the one, the ball? What about the ball? What happened to the ball? What happened to Nabal? Hey, Nabal. Man, we've been watching over your land. We ain't have to now. But we watched over your land. Nobody ain't took nothing. We just need a little food while we're here. Who is David? Oh, he's the Lord's anointing. You done messed up. Who is David? That I should reverence him. David was like, David tried to take man in his own hand. Man, hey, gird up, man. Gird up. Let's go get this man. He messing with me now. You see, David was to take matters in his own hand. He let anger ride rest in his bosom. But it just so happened that wife that he was gonna, that wife that Nabal had, intervened and stopped David. He said, "You thank you for coming in and stopping me from executing judgment my way." Right? And he smote Nabal, killed him with sorrow. He died. Sorrow, sorrow killed him. And guess what? He gave David his wife. Y'all better be careful out there. Keep crossing me. I'm going to have a lot of y'all wives. And I'm just, <laughs> to be I don't want no lot of wives, boy. It's hard for one. Hard with one, though. But don't, don't think. Look what David's prayer was. If I've caused this, if this had happened, if this was me, let somebody else grind with my wife. That's what David said. If I did this, let somebody else take her. Let somebody get her. You understand? Y'all better open y'all eyes, boy. Boys and girls. God does not play. He does not play. He does not play about his people. And ain't nothing changed. If God never changed, ain't nothing changed. Well, we under the new covenant. Ain't nothing changed. Ain't nothing changed in regards to how God judges things. And how God pronounces judgment. But you better start standing in your boldness. Realize who you are as a woman or a man in Christ. And realize you can't be touched. But you know, we're coming to coming with that realization. That don't mean you can treat people like trash because you're the king and you're a queen. And I ain't, you understand what I'm saying? Because you are one of God's anointed. Don't use that as like, I can just treat people like trash because God is for me. So I'm going to dog people out. I'm going to make people bow down to me. I'm going to be a God upon this earth. Yeah, he'll smite you down. You will die like a man, says the Lord. So in order to keep those promises steady, 
you got to stay at his commandment. I ain't saying you're going to be perfect. I ain't saying you ain't going to sin. But the thing about a Christian and a non-believer is when a Christian repent, we do our best not to do it. And God's going to help us. But for those who just fake repent, Lord, I ain't going to never cheat on my wife again. You're yeah, right. Three days later, you're at the hotel room. I'm never going to leave my husband again. You leave him again. And you, you, you expecting good to come from that? You expecting good to come from evil? As a, as a Christian, you crazy. You are crazy. If you think God rewards wickedness with good. You're crazy. You might can convince all those people that convince you in evil matters. I'm a good person. I, I, I. Yeah, you let them trick you into doing something evil and now they're pronouncing judgment. Guess what? It's not going to be just from the judgment pronounced on the person you're talking to, but you too for giving them bad advice. <laughs> yeah. All you family members that done broke up happy marriages and so-called friends, get ready. It's coming upon your head. I know this for a fact. How do I know this for a fact? Because God has done it in my life. And it's the crazy part. I'm divorced from the woman. But God's judgment remains. God's judgment remain. What that mean? That I ain't with her no more. You cause God's what God put together to put us be put asunder. Would you really think God was gonna let you slide? By no means. You could have repented. It's easy to pick up the phone. Hey man. I'm sorry, you know. I'm telling you, you think God don't put stuff on people's heart. Hey, I remember you and your wife was going through that things, man, and uh you know, I'm sorry, because I did say some things I shouldn't have said, and I'm sorry, man, just forgive me for it. But all I got to do is go to forgiveness for God. Nope. Sometimes you got to go to the source. Well, you cause, if you have an art against your brother, go to your brother. Didn't the Bible say that? Go to the person you have a problem with. So if you cause harm to somebody, as a child of the Most High God, it's your God-given duty to go to somebody and be like, you know what, I'm sorry. Women, y'all better hear me. Because I know y'all hate to say those words. I'm sorry. This y'all, I'm sorry. You want me to fix you some food? I can fix my own damn food. I want an apology right now. <laughs> I need an apology from your lips, woman. And for you men that don't like saying I'm sorry, Continue for three you, better, miles. you better swallow your pride and say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for what I did to you. You didn't ask for forgiveness from God too. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's why a lot of people are being punished. You know something I told my wife? She texted me the other day, yesterday. And I, I told her what I, God put in my mind. There's some things God wants you to tell me that you ain't telling me. I'll talk to you later. I guess I struck a nerve. <laughs> Tell the truth. The truth will set you free. If she expects to come back to my house that God has given me, you better come clean. That's all I'm saying. If you ain't willing to come clean, I can't let nothing dirty back in my house. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And I got to keep them demons out. Because I know a lot of times, guess what? Them demons won't back in. And a demon ain't going to admit fault. Demons just want to come back in because God forgive me. Just come back in like everything nothing happened. You ain't been gone five weeks. Going on six. You ain't been gone six weeks. You ready to come back home now? What you want to come back home for? Tell me something. That's how I act. I'm bold with it, people. You should be too. That protects you and protects you from others. Mm -hmm. You understand? Don't be afraid. Don't be scared. I remember my, I was talking to my uh, auntie about it. Where your wife at? I like, oh no. And cause I keep kind of asking people like, where your wife at? I'm, I ain't finna keep lying for you. I don't supposed to lie anyway. I oh, she at home. No, she ain't at home. So when they ask, where your wife at? She, I don't know. Somewhere. She left me again. I'm gonna tell the truth. I don't care how bad it make you look. What I'm alive? What I'm a sugarcoat for you for? I guarantee if a man leaves a woman house, they ain't gonna be, that mother, 
they gonna dog you to the to the fullest. But I ain't trying to dog you. I try to cover for you just in case you do come back. But after a mile, after a while, I'm like, you know what, man? I'm not. God said, don't bear false witness. I'm lying. If I go to church, tell me, where your wife at? Oh, she's sick. The Lord like, she ain't sick. But it, actually, it is a, it's a truth. She is sick. She's sick from departing from the presence of the Lord. So I ain't lying. <laughs> By looking at it from a spiritual perspective. But I'm telling y'all people, y'all better learn to forgive and let God do what he do. And if somebody give you an option, like David, like Solomon gave to all those people, hey man, if you like you do it, stay home. If you leave, you dead. Three years later, he must have forgot about it. He left, miles, died. Turn left onto airport Boulevard. You gotta be careful, people. I'm trying to tell y'all something that I've learned over the years. I hate to tell a lot of my stories. And if you're like, Houston, you made that happen. I don't believe in speaking a damn thing into existence. Did you hear what I said? I don't believe in speaking nothing into existence. I can't speak nothing into existence. But I can bring harm upon myself from doing evil deeds. And I can bring good upon myself by doing righteous acts. It is what it is, people. There's no way around it. And as a Christian, y'all need to learn to understand that. You think you can just keep doing what you want as a Christian and keep asking for forgiveness? That God is, God is faithful to forgive your sins, but he's also faithful to give you some consequences behind your sins so you won't do it no more. Don't get to the point where your heart's so hard you think God condones sins like these gays out there who got churches. God's okay with me laying up with a man, and he's okay with you doing it too. No, God gave you over to your vile passions, and now you're spreading lies to the people. Because you think it's okay because you say Jesus' name. Lord, Lord. Many will come to me and say that, says the Lord. Continue on Airport Boulevard for one and a half You see, people, miles. I tell you like it is. I tell you like it is. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. In regards to many people that have crossed me. Hmm. Yeah, I said it. Me. Because I know God anointed me to spread the gospel. And I told you what God told me years ago. I'm going to tell you again. I got tired of being used and abused by people. I really did. And I was just praying about it, Lord. I'm tired of people using me, Lord Jesus. You know what Lord Jesus told me? I'm using you. So you allow me to go through this stuff because I'm trying to fix them and fix their life and see what happens and I'm see how they can treat you, see how they listen to what you tell them and then if they don't listen to what they tell them, yeah, I'm using you. Even through all this, I'm using you and God is using you too, people. Y'all better listen to me. Nope, y'all better listen to God. But I talk for God. I, I know I say me a lot sometimes, but y'all better listen to what I'm saying to you. It's biblical. Y'all better be careful who you cross. You think, you think God say love your enemies for a reason? Why do you think he say love your enemies? Because their enemy might be converted. You might be setting his life to set him on the right path. But if you treat him like an enemy instead of a neighbor, now you pronounce a judgment on yourself. You do all you can do. But remember what the Lord said, for every temptation I will give you a way out. And sometimes the way out is not you leaving, but it's people leaving your life. And sometimes the way out is you leaving. It's never the same. That's why I hate when people will six steps to doing that, man. Forget you and your steps. I hate when I watch Christian five reasons to know that the Lord is for Lord have mercy, Jesus. Nobody reasons the same. Oh, I turned I turned that video so fast. You know, I know they mean well. But that's what God told them in regards to their life, maybe. Five steps to the... Man, it's a thousand steps in the Bible. You left about a lot of steps out. You understand? I don't, I, I'm not... Ooh. All right. Let me shut up before I get mad. Like, I love... The, one of my favorite stories is when Moses was coming down the mountain. And Moses tried to intervene. He was like, man, don't destroy them, Lord. He said, the anger of the Lord waxed hot, right? Moses wasn't even halfway down before God's anger transferred to him. 
And he was mad. He took the Ten Commandments and stew them on the ground and made and ground the golden calf up and made them he drink it. Right on to that was according to God's right. will, whether you want to believe it or not, people. <laughs> that was God's will. Yes, it was for him to do just that. In one thousand feet, turn left. But nobody wants to believe that. Sometimes you, as a Christian's anger, is not even yours. It's his. Embrace it. Because, you know, sometimes I done did things and I'm like, man, I don't think I should have did that. And then, Lord, they start giving me confirmation from other people. You're dead on. Don't need to ask for apology. It is what it is. People, if you haven't accepted you Christ in your life, then you will arrive at your destination. I advise you to let God into your life today and do what the law requires of you. And think about it. You got protection. Because you got the Lord. You just got to stay in it. Don't fall off late in age like Saul, Solomon did. Don't fall off early like Saul. Stay in it like David. Take the consequences. Take the chastisement. Take them when God tells you not to do something again and don't do it no more David had a beautiful woman laying in the bed with him as an older man he was like oh, I don't think so <laughs> I learned my lesson a lot of y'all Christians just ain't learning y'all lessons have a blessed day